Hey there, CKUW listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in today for people of interest. And I have a couple of interesting people with me. I have Paul Plett from Ode Productions and wonderful Joanne Roberts. I'm going to ask them some questions about this company here in Winnipeg. Paul, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Paul Plett. I'm a film director here in Winnipeg. And, and uh, yeah, that's me. And Joanne, how about you? Uh, hi, I'm an actress here in Winnipeg, and apparently now I'm writing and directing films, thanks to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> nice, an actress. <laughs> well, we definitely have a creative Winnipeg. Paul, are you from Winnipeg? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm originally from outside of Winnipeg, a little town called Landmark, uh, and I've been living here in Winnipeg for the last couple years. Yeah. Well, welcome to the city. This <laughs> has you. been my home for about maybe almost 30 years. I was born here, but then I moved around for most of my childhood. So it's neat to be a little bit of a cultural person across the country. Mm -hmm. um, but anyhow, this isn't about me. Uh, so, Paul, can you tell me a little bit about Ode Productions? Uh, yeah, Ode Productions is a small uh, little production company here in Winnipeg. Uh, we produce films. Our mandate uh, is conscious entertainment. Um, we're trying to make films that are... Uh, social justice is very close to my heart. Um, so films that sort of have a conscious um, theme to them or, or a, bit of, a bit of depth to them. But I like making films. We like making films that are entertaining as well. I don't like movies that are, that are preachy. We want movies that are fun to watch. So, yeah, that's a little bit about Ode Productions. Conscious entertainment. Oh, I love that. And Joanne, what drew you to become part of Ode? Uh, Paul and I have been working together on and off for a couple of years now. We started on a lovely little sci-fi short. Um, but I think what what Paul offers, uh, which not a lot of people do, is a safe environment. I really appreciate that we're always working with friends. Um, if something feels unsafe, it's always really easy to bring up and it's rectified right away in terms of environment but also people that is really really important to me and uh, so when he came to me about starting a shift in his company towards um, conscious entertainment that was something that was really really important to me um, for me personally I want to see a lot more diversity in film mm -hmm. um, I think every one of us working with him right now has a different take on what conscious entertainment means to them so it's really nice to have another outlet to express ourselves um, for entertainment, but also for change in the world. Mm -hmm. So then I want to ask something personal about the conscious connection and why you feel that that's important to share in the world today and what inspired you to make uh, a conscious effort? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I guess for me, uh, it kind of comes back to, I, yeah, I was born here in Manitoba, um, but when I was uh, three years old, I moved uh, to Africa, and I actually grew up in Africa. Uh, I grew up in Zambia and Sudan. Um, so a lot of questions and, and thoughts when it comes to diversity, financial inequality in the world, etc. I mean, some of the problems and issues that the world is facing today, I was sort of asking at a very young age. So social justice has always been close to my heart just because it's sort of, it's been the way that I kind of see the world. I think that there are people, I mean, my father, my dad always talked about in the world, there are the haves and the have-nots. Um, there's, there's a finite amount of wealth and power in the world, and if someone has it, that means that someone else doesn't have it. So that's always been something that's been close to my heart. And when I started making films, I definitely... I mean, social justice is always something that I've kind of come back to, and, and it's sort of been a grounding factor for me. I guess more recently, I sort of thought, well, if there, are, if there are other people that are interested in this, and if there's a way that I can build community around this, that's something that I want to be a part of as well. Uh, I, I really, I mean, being a, a small, independent production company, not with a lot of funds, I mean, we have, we sort of have two things that we're able to offer people. One is uh, a fun environment to work in, if you can work with people that are, are, are fun to be around. And the other is fulfillment, if you're able to work on projects that are fulfilling. Um, and I found that for me, when I'm focusing on a project that has a social justice theme or is conscious in some way, it's more fulfilling. And I noticed that other people have sort of found that as well. Yeah, and recently I've also noticed that if I'm not making a conscious decision to involve 
a particular person or a particular group of people, that person or that group of people won't be involved. There, there is a certain group of people that kind of will gravitate towards me naturally, and if I'm not reaching out and trying to make opportunities for other people, those people won't have those opportunities. That's mm-hmm. awesome. So, And you're talking about diversity, mm-hmm. for example. Joanne, what would you say about uh, how that you've seen that included? Yes, um, I find that it's very difficult for uh, minorities, um, people with disabilities, so many different groups of people um, in the world of film, it's very difficult for us to get jobs, um, simply because there are no roles for a lot of people like us. Uh, And that is unfortunate, it's definitely something that is slowly changing, I think it's not changing fast enough. Mm. What I really like about Paul and what he's doing is that he's involving so many different groups of people. In his projects, we're shooting something in January with um, Joanna and her troupe. They're mm-hmm. um, deaf actors. They are wonderful communicators and so beautiful to see on screen. It is going to be such a privilege to work with them. So where did you go to locate your deaf community actors? Uh, we, worked on another, we worked on another short film earlier in this year uh, where we needed an actor. We needed a deaf actress. The character was deaf. And I just, it's its kind of a no-brainer at this point that if you have a character that's deaf, they should be played by a, a deaf actress. And it's incumbent on us to seek out that person or those people. I'm so glad you said that. Just recently, I was watching two different really popular Netflix shows, and one of them had an actor that was in a wheelchair and I felt oh that's so I'm so proud of you thank you so much for being inclusive Mm -hmm. and that's just we need to be more diverse of in all kinds of ways and then that same actor was in another film where he was fully able to use his feet and I thought that's not true (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. and it just kind of felt like no I like the honesty of Mm -hmm. diversity and being you know just real about it and life is real and we all have different you know different walks of life and yeah. walking or not walking and hearing or not hearing and so it's it's important that we're all included so thank you for yeah. that i appreciate hearing that yeah. so when it comes to the production that you are doing right now yeah. i that's one of the reasons why i am here mm-hmm. is yeah. i got to be part of a christmas production and so i got to see this first hand and it was really exciting for me can you tell me a little bit about that production it's called uh, holiday hurry and it's about a girl who is um, very late for things all the time and not based on me Paul thank you very much <laughs> and she just finds herself running later and later and later uh, during the film and it's about what is important um, in terms not only just of the, about the holidays but what is important in life and she is running so late for this family event and um, I think that she goes through a couple journeys along the way and discovers maybe being late isn't exactly a bad thing mm, mm-hmm, mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Marianne gets to play a character you did a great film. job oh, thanks so good. oh yeah, yeah. Woo, I'm Love great <laughs> um, and again it's um, I think it lends to reaching out to people like we didn't know each other before we started this mm-hmm. process of pre-production right um, and it's lovely to just put out a call and see who is interested and really reach out and look for people that we want to work with that fit our demographic. Yeah, we just we're trying to grow a family of creators here, and and uh, and you seem like an awesome person. Uh, obviously, the end goal for everyone is we want to make a great product at the end. So if someone doesn't fit, I mean, if they don't seem like they they'd be good to get along with, but also if they don't seem like they can do the role, right? I mean, it, I think it's really in tandem with the entertainment aspect, and the movie has to function as well at the end of the day because people are going to watch it and they're not going to a lot of people aren't going to know or care about the conscious aspect or how much work you put into it or how you're trying to be inclusive and all that they're just going to judge the product itself right and I think for people that do kind of care about that stuff there are those layers I'm actually thankful for this interview and um, I do have a couple more questions when it comes to this production uh, and where it's going to be aired it's before Christmas are we going to see it this year yes yeah this this is Wednesday today's Wednesday that's right then it's going to be coming out I mean we're hoping it's going to come out on Monday or Tuesday we're we want to release it December 1st mm-hmm. that's our aim or December 2nd yeah hopefully the first and yeah. where can people watch for it 
Um, you can find it on Paul's YouTube channel. It's Paul Plett, P-A-U-L space P-L-E-T-T. <laughs> um, and all over our Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... And hopefully everyone, that, I mean, you'll hopefully be promoting it and everyone who's involved is going to hopefully promote it. It's going to be online. It's going to be free for everyone to watch on YouTube. If they just look up Holiday Hurry or they look up, yeah, Paul Plett, Marianne, they look up Joanna. Oh, I'm going to put all you guys in the tags, so... Yeah, anybody that wants to watch it can watch it uh, as soon as possible. And I've seen a little clip of it already, and it looks so good, guys. I just want to encourage you to watch that. Um, tune into Paul Plett's YouTube page and check that out. I think that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. For me, I've been a part of some larger film work and television work, network television, and uh, been on the set, and, and I really felt like your professionalism was at par, and I had a witness experience where everyone was a team who did great work so yeah. when it comes to that excellence obviously there's training and and schooling and and you know a past involvement with film so what's your story on becoming a, a production company now um i went to the toronto film school uh, about 10 years ago and uh so that's my training i started a production company at this production company owed productions basically right after when i graduated so I've been making films for the last 10 years or so, and I think other people that are involved have sort of a passion for film and a passion for the arts and have, have found their ways into productions in various different ways. I think that most of the team that we have also works on bigger some of the bigger productions in town. So I think then that group of people wants to carry over that professionalism, that standard of quality into our productions as well, because these are the productions that we kind of have more ownership over these are this is us this isn't some bigger project where we're actually producing and directing and starring in these films yeah I felt that like everybody became a friend to one another um, right from the top down and when we were out on the streets too so <laughs> that yeah. was fun thank god we were below you know where it wasn't yeah. in those cold minus yeah. double digits mm -hmm. it was single digits we could it was still cold. Yes, yes <laughs> I mean, it was. let's face it, it's winter. Yeah. But and so, how when it comes to winter filming outside, uh, what's what's tricky about that? It's, it's cold. It's cold. It gets very cold. <laughs> Dealing with the environment. Yeah. Like very technical aspects. Is it snowing? Is it really windy? Is it wet outside? Um, and yeah. Especially when you're outside for a few hours at a time, it definitely feels a lot colder yeah. than it actually is. So it's. Also, in terms like our crew can be really, really comfortable, but the actors on screen yeah. definitely because their costumes too take into consideration. We want everyone to be warm, so we've got blankets backstage, backstage behind the camera, <laughs> um, and we tell everybody to layer up as much as they can. We want, I mean, first and foremost, to have everybody be really safe and really comfortable yeah. during the outdoor shoot. If you're not having a good time, there's no point. I mean, if you're because the again low low budget, no budget productions, people are coming up, they're volunteering. Mm -hmm. If someone's volunteering and they're not enjoying themselves. It, that's kind of pointless for me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can appreciate that. So it's good to have those things considered. I know you brought the coffee and the donuts and blankets. It's just been so neat to, to see how much you care. I'm just wondering about what you see for your future. There's a lot of directions we could go in the future at this point. I think that what I like what's happening right now is we're working with a small group of people that is really dedicated and really, I think, getting a lot out of it, like we said, having fun and, and working on projects that are fulfilling. I think that, that uh, we could really grow something, but it's going to require a lot of, a lot of dedication, um, a lot of hard work. So we have uh, big hopes and dreams for the future, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see. And you know what? The art of creativity is going by intuition, right? You're, you don't always know what tomorrow is, mm -hmm. but you respect that you have an artist's soul and heart that you're going to tap into and you're going to be able to create from that and just go forward and soar. And you have a team of people that want to be with you and you know, great equipment and great quality work. And so I think that you're going to do great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, definitely thanks to you for coming out and helping out and, and talking to us here. Yeah, CKUW 95.9 FM is pleased to uh, talk to Paul Plett and Joanne Roberts today uh, from Ode Productions. You can also see them on Instagram. What's the handle? 
Productions Ode. Productions Ode. I just want to say thanks again. Have a great rest of your day, Paul and Joanne. Appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Marianne. Thanks a lot.